Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very ex uh, excited because we have a special guest with us today. It's Christine Osepian, and she is a life coach, and she, uh, you know, goes and taps into different areas. And today, especially, we're going to talk about fear, overcoming fear, and being able to have the courage to rise above the challenges in life and move forward. And Christine is going to talk about how to do that and some of the effective ways that she found, her clients found, most effective to help them get through the fear and to actually dip into their own personal um, abilities and be able to become the ideal self, you know? And so today, Christine's going to take it away. She's going to tell you a little about herself and she's going to she's going to get into it. So I'm very excited to hear what you have to say. So take it away, Christine. <laughs> Thank you for having me, um, Stacy. And uh, I mean, where do I even begin? I was born and raised in a country, in a culture, in a religion that was literally enveloped, like surrounded by fear. Everything was fear based. It's very much it's still fear based for my culture. And uh, I mean, all my life, the first, of course, when we're children, we're resilient, we're powerful. Like my mom tells me stories of things that I did when I was a little girl. And I'm like, well, I was brave. But then the way, <laughs> you know, I was raised, I, you know, to be in fear of everything, this is dangerous, you can't do that, you can't do this, and you're a girl and that all of those things just took a toll. And yeah, by the time I was 32 years old, I was literally living in fear every day of my life, um, fear for lack of money, fear of losing this and that. And uh, I mean, every, every area of our life that can have fear, I was in fear, I was just crippling, I was falling apart, it was becoming very emotional, uh, the emotions became very physical. And I was in a career that I hated um, in accounting. And it just, I hit rock bottom and mm -hmm. fear was really the foundation of me hitting rock bottom. Um, it became, cause fear is a thing that it creeps up on you and yeah. yeah, you can manage it for a while. And then if you don't take its reins and control it, it takes over your life. Basically yeah. your left brain logic beco becomes your master. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, our my my our brain is not our master our logic and our ego is not our master it's a servant but yes. a lot of our world tends to treat it as the master and many of my clients that come to me they literally tell me help me control my brain I feel like I can't control my brain I'm like you created it you can control it yeah so it's about empowering not only that I've empowered myself and I learned the tools and techniques that have worked for me and that's why I became such an advocate of sharing this with my clients because it does work. Otherwise I wouldn't have done it for 14 years and it transformed my life because once you realize that it is your own creation and we are our own creation and we create everything, we create our own heaven, we create our own hell, we create our own thoughts, we create our, everything is our own creation. And right. if we are creating that, you know, heaviness, darkness, we can create the light. So also I always encourage my clients to understand that in accepting our own darkness, we accept our light. So it's not to yes. be fought with. I always say we're not fighting fear ever. We're just simply with love, uh, taming it. Just yes. like a child that would be afraid that would run to their parent and cry and scream and throw a tantrum. That's literally our ego brain, the fearful brain that is always, it's kind of like caught in the cavemen woman time still yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. everything is dangerous while back in the day it was other dangers now the it's it it seems to even be worse now because right. it's so um intangible the fears that can you know cripple people yeah. um you know the the fear of losing their job the fear of losing their relationships the fear of losing their home the fear of losing their car their their safety their security and it's constantly brewing in people's lives and it just cripples everybody but yeah. the really the true spiritual awakening to me is that they you know taking your power back and realizing that we are resilient beings of spirit having a human experience and fear is just an illusion that we created which created our separation from our essence and self and now it's the awakening is really taking that power back and realizing that fear is just the false evidence that's appearing real in our lives and 
in realizing that just as we created it, we have the power to dissolve it. Um, and I give my clients the analogy of it, think of yourself like a glass blower. And if you created that glass and you blew it up and it was beautiful in the beginning, so you thought, and then it became crippled and scary, you're not going to put it on your desk and just be terrified by it, right? Yeah. You just stick it back into the fire right. and recreate new. It's about realizing that it is our own creation at any moment. We can take our power back with the right tools, which is why, you know, with my client through hypnotherapy, through breath work, through coaching, these are the tools that I use every day with my clients in helping them take their power back because yeah. it is necessary. It is, it has to happen. It's literally since 2012, we've been transitioning from the old world into the new world. Right. Eventually everybody has to catch on to the, to transfer to the new world because the suffering, this, this, this thing that is happening in our world cannot, it can't, it, it can't go on any longer. Like, truth always conquers i always say truth and love always conquers yeah. so it's time oh i agree <laughs> so I hopefully agree. i gave you a good <laughs> no you did you know and what the first question that pops in my head is what happens what do you suggest for those people who are caught in the past where they remember how it was and those are the times in their head where life was grand for them and now life has changed so dramatically in the last couple of decades you know we went let's say from a four all the way to a, a 50 and all these changes came about in our society now for these people who fear change and are scared of it and they just want to be stuck in that you know in that past they're afraid to move on and they're afraid of failure you know what do you suggest for those people i mean many suggestions number one um are we are ever changing beings whether we like it or not change is inevitable so now number one thing i do with my clients is helping them get comfortable with change because our life changes all the time we change all the time yeah we're not the same person we don't look the same we don't feel the same we don't even our food choices change you might find yourself loving something for five years and then not liking it at all. Right. So we're constantly changing and, and it, it is the ego's work that doesn't like change because the ego loves the known as much as it may be miserable. It knows what it feels like. And that's yeah. why people get trapped in it that it's miserable, uh, but they don't, they so fear the unknown that they'd rather be miserable. And I'm a Gemini by my sign is a Gemini and I'm all about, I wasn't comfortable with change, but I'm all about change. And so yeah. as uncomfortable as it was, as I trained myself over and over and over, literally affirming to myself, I'm comfortable with change. Change is good. Only good things happen. Better things are coming my way. And if this thing isn't working anymore, a better, something better, like affirming affirmations are powerful for us to really, as I always tell my clients, think of your ego self as your your little self, which it really is that yes. scare that is throwing tantrums and think of your higher self, your divine, creative, right brain as your parent, infinite parent, right? That has right. all the solutions. And so this parent needs to start having that conversation with the little one. And mm -hmm. it literally is happening. It's just our little self is yelling and screaming so loud it's kind of that that divine part of us will never force itself and and yell and scream and be like, shut up, be quiet, listen to me. So yeah. it just quietly waits until this tantrum calms down enough, which is the surrender that oftentimes my clients go, I don't know what else to do. I'm like completely lost. And that's the sweetest space and time for us to really dive into the subconscious. And because all of these beliefs are just, childhood beliefs, stories, memories, things that were said to us, things, programming that was done onto us. Because when we're born, we really like a clean slate. Yes, I can go as deep as past lives and bringing our past life, you know, karmic stuff that we need to deal with. But overall, we're more so, we have psychic am amnesia by the time mm -hmm. we're six seven years old we forget right. who we are and because this world just takes us and starts to mold us and break us into pieces and trying to turn us into something that is quote unquote normal I don't know what that is even 
what normal is. But as that change comes, we forget who we are. And as we forget who we are, we get lost. We kind of like, although the disconnection is not possible from our divine self, we feel disconnected. It's kind of like, I, as I always say, we clamp that umbilical cord that connects us to our higher self. And we fall into the trap of fears and limitations because we think, oh my God, I have to take care of this all by myself. I have to do this all by myself. And it really is not the moment that we turn to our higher self as every day of my life, I affirm higher self, guide my way, speak my truth. That's how I live my life. Because the moment yeah. I decide to live the human way, trouble comes. Exactly. And that's when people can realize literally where are they in their life? Are they living that human life disconnected from their higher self? Or are they living their higher self life? Because when you are connected to your higher self, life is flowing like an yes. effortless river. It's flowing. There is no fears. There's no death. Yes. Are there moments even in my life, especially during the full moon today is a full moon. It is a perfect time. We're having yes. this conversation about fears fears come up during the full moon and feminine energy Does. is it really affected overall all energies are affected but the feminine is more affected during the full moon because it physically it's scientifically shown that there's physical changes that happen in our brain during the full moon yeah and so having said that people need to also notice these times the feminine cycle times the full moon times because so many people are so used to turning around and blaming themselves what is wrong with me why am i feeling this way oh my god i need to get on medications oh my god i need to da -da -da -da. and they just spiral out of control instead yeah. of going okay Am I close to my cycle? Am I on my cycle? Those are the first places that I check in. Oh, is yeah. it a full moon? Is there a full moon coming? Because in not blaming yourself, because imagine you're constantly blaming yourself. Imagine yourself. I mean, there's so much I want to talk about with you, but I'm just trying to. Yeah. The greatest relationship we ever have is the one with ourselves. I yeah. always say it's not with our parents, it's not with our children, it's not with our pets, it's not with our coworkers, it's not with our friends, it's not with anybody, it is with the self. And if we're constantly turning around and bashing ourselves and naming, calling ourselves names and saying how I can't even say the words, I'm going to, I have chills, like I'm not even going to say yeah. the negative words, but people who do this as I used to do this, yeah. what is wrong with me and it spirals down out of control. When you do that to yourself, you cannot ever live in that heaven world on yeah. this planet in the physical body is just natural. You, we need to realize that in encouraging ourselves, just as if we were to do the same with children and animals. If you mm -hmm. keep encouraging a child and an animal, that child is great. That animal is great, well-behaved. And if you constantly punish them and are mean to them, what is to happen? You exactly. cannot expect any better from that child or animal. And we work the same exact way. If we keep punishing ourselves, I oftentimes ask my clients, I go, if your best friend was to talk to you the way you talk to yourself, what would you say to your best friend? They're like, Oh, I wouldn't be their friend. I'm right. like, well, you're doing it to yourself every single day. So would mm -hmm. you say you want to be a better friend to yourself? Right? Exactly. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? And these are the all the foundational reasons where freer doubt, worry, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-love just comes in. Yeah. And, and fear is the one that cripples us. You're not worthy. You don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. All of that. It's all fear-based. There's not yeah. even just a fear of failure in people. There's also fear of success. Some of my clients fear for success because they're thinking, what am I going to do if I have more money? How can right. I, can I manage it? Are people going to, you know, look at me different? Are people going to treat me different? I, so there's also fear of success. Yeah, it's about really getting that illusion out of the way mm -hmm. so we can truly live our greatest potential yes. because we're all here with a great, great, great mission, which is why so many people feel empty as I did 14 years ago. I felt yeah. so empty inside. I was like, my soul felt like it was literally like a flower dying. Yeah, it just I it's it's an awful feeling, but it can always be changed 
And I, I think at some point in our lives, we all go through it. And, and the one thing I like that you said that I agree with you totally is sometimes we get lost in the real world and we forget that the most important person to satisfy is ourselves. And we're so, we can come from an environment where, you know, you want to please mom and dad and you don't want to let them down and you worry about what other people think. And instead of just being happy with who you are, and as long as you're happy with yourself, that's all that matters. Because when, when push comes to shove at the end of the day, who do you have in that bedroom by yourself? It's you. It's you. And it, all that matters. No one else is going to feel your pain. No one else is going to feel your emotions. No one else is going to feel the things that are going on inside you. And they don't have to deal with it. It's you that has to deal with it. So really, exactly. you're most, like you said, your most important person to please is yourself. We come first. We should be on the podium. Nobody else that for, you know, once we're on the podium and we feel good about ourselves, then we can help everybody else and do whatever we want. But I think so many people get caught up, you know, and I call it like the root cause. We go to back in the day where we wanted to be, make mommy and daddy happy. Then we're adults and you see people still trying to make mommy and daddy happy and they're all upset. And then that behavior kind of like exhilarates and then you want to make your your in-laws happy you want to make your friends happy or you want to make grandma and grandpa happy and then you're 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 become a pleaser but the last person you're pleasing is yourself and then who gets hurt the most don't you think yeah and that's why people become resentful and angry yeah. at others because they have that expectation so much of the pain suffering also comes fear comes from people putting so much um, effort and energy onto thinking their spouse is going to fulfill them and make them happy. Their child right. is going to fulfill them and make them happy. Their job is going to fulfill them and make them happy. And when it doesn't, they just feel broken because yeah. they're looking outside of themselves. And I always say, your world is from within. Yes. And many people have also thought, well, isn't that selfish if I put myself first? I said, well, if you don't do it in an ego way, absolutely not. In taking right. care of yourself, in healing yourself, in helping yourself, you become that vibration that you're meant to be to shine your light onto others and bring others with you. Yeah. So it's not a selfish path at all. It's a self-full path. Yeah, that I myself had to realize because in my culture, our parents always say, well, you when you guys are well, we'll be well. And I'm like, no, everybody has a responsibility for themselves. Like if you take care of yourself, then I don't have to worry about you as my parent. Yeah. And vice versa. Right. But everybody has to take responsibility for their own healing and not look to a spouse to make them happy. Exactly. When my clients seldomly say, well, my spouse makes me angry. I go, why? What is getting triggered? What do you need to heal? Because your spouse is really just a mirror. Yes. They're just a mirror of trying to show you what you need to deal with, what you need to heal. So it is not the responsibility to make you happy. And it is not really their fault that they're making you angry because right. you need to heal. Exactly. I had to go through that pattern and process because it's patterns that we fall into. We're yeah. all in patterns. Oh, yeah. All of our life is patterns. I tell my clients, I'm like, if it's a great, good, positive pattern, go for it. But if it's a negative one, oh, Stay you away. need to face it. Otherwise, it will. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you really have to face it. Not even because so many people even what we patterns, they're like hiding and avoiding. Yeah, they're pretending they're thinking, oh, my goodness, because that's a very big pattern in people. Oftentimes, even in the masculine, which is unfortunate that I have to say it this way, but it is because I see it for 14 years in this practice. Uh, the feminine is more feeling like I have to do something about it. Like 14 years, I want to easily say on average, 70% of my clientele has always been female and only 30% male. Although I'm noticing that energy is changing, which is, is so wonderful to see. But, but I mean, the masculine has really generationally been taught like just, um, what is it? There's so many ways of, oh, walk it off. Men don't cry, yeah. this and that. And so they just hide and avoid and, and make excuses and don't like conflict. And exactly. And then it becomes a physical issue. And then it becomes anger. And then, I mean, all to me, every emotion that we have that is negative is behind it is fear, some kind of fear. 
even with anger, right? People express yeah. anger. That's just the defense mechanism because we're afraid of something, right. losing control, losing whatever it may be. Yeah. There's fear is at the core of everything. So once we get could take our power back from fear, you take your power back. Like you literally, your life transforms. And when I it say happened stay with away me from- and it happens with all my clients. Yep. Yeah? When I say stay away from it, I, I mean like you know, I see people they 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 attract negativity and they they yes. they, they see a path and they they follow that negative path instead of staying away from it. They just they just attract negativity yes. and their behavior. You, they are just you know they they become they're they're negative individuals who who do want to be positive, but they just they just keep attracting negative energy and they keep following yes. the roads on negative energy. And there's yes because there's two reasons for that. Number one, some people are addicted to pain and suffering. Yeah, I oftentimes. Agree. And, and number two, their vibration is they're very low. Yeah. I used to be that person. I, I am very kind, very loving, very giving. Uh, but up until 14 years ago, as loving as I giving as I was, I was truly a doormat yeah. because I was bending backwards to be good to people thinking if I'm good to them, if I do what they want, they will love me. It was backwards backwards. because I didn't love myself and all absolutely. And all I got was negativity back. People took advantage of me. People just disrespected me in every way because they were like, well, she's a doorman. We could do whatever we want. Yeah, We can treat it however we want. She won't say no to us. Right. I have more love and respect in my life now with boundaries, loving boundaries than I ever did bending backwards, being of service to others and helping others and giving to others. It was out of control. It was literally taking a toll on my life. And then my fear was, well, if I say no, they won't love me. Mm -hmm. And that's sad for a person to live that way. And so there's so many people that fear not having love in their life. So they just give, 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 give. And then they become angry and they become resentful and they just, their vibration is very low. So what are they to attract? More negativity. Yeah. We attract what we are. Our our world around us is literally the mirror of what is inside of us. If every yes. individual takes a moment to say, how is my life around me? I, you can see a crystal clear picture of what's going on inside of you. Yes. And instead of blaming, why is that person mistreating me? Why is that happening? As I used to do, I used to victimize myself thinking, mm-hmm. oh, well, well why, why is this happening to me? I'm so nice to people. But I, I, nobody taught me like this is not taught. This is why I advocate honestly for our world has to change. Children need to not be torn away from this truth of loving themselves, knowing who they are, but to really keep them in, aligned with that energy so that they can continue to realize that when I'm well, everyone around me will be well. When yeah. I'm well, when my vibration is high, my world around me feels like a fruitless river that's flowing, heaven that I'm living instead yeah. of hell. And this is this is like I I that's why every podcast opportunity I get, I get on because this is something we need to spread this word because children are being like we're not as adults, we're not being of service to our children right? when we're I doing agree. that. Mm-hmm. We're just taking them and trying to mold them into something that they're not. Eventually, they're going to come back. Yesterday, I was with my parents and we had uh, a guest. She came from Florida and her granddaughter, she loved to do something else. And her mom wanted her to go into the medical field. And this is a close friend of ours. Three years she wasted in the medical field. And in the end, she quit. All that money, all that time wasted. Yeah. And she took she took on another. And I told the grandma and I said, you cannot force anybody to do. And these are all the reasons why we forget and we become fearful. Because I myself, I went into accounting, not by choice. Right. Because it was the one that made money, right? Yeah. It was the safe path. I think that's how we were taught back then, though. It was, you know, basically choose your career by the career that, you know, does the best. And I ended up. Yes. But you know what? Yeah, Uh exactly. And uh, what I do love about my children's generation, Gen Z's. Oh, my goodness. There's not going to be nine to fivers. I don't know how our world and corporations are going to survive. because I don't know. I I say that all the time. Yeah. Yes. Our world is changing rapidly and it's gonna change our generations we 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 um 
I want to say settled and we accepted what we were told, but my children's generation, oh, no, 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 no. They have their own path. They have their own mission. They have their own minds and no one can change it. Yeah. And in fact, I feel proud to see that because we all had that resilience. Like yeah. yesterday, my mom was telling me stories about the things I used to do when I was a little girl. I'm like, oh, my God. As rough as my mother was raising me, I was so rebellious still. Yeah. So we we need to, that's where all the fear begins when children are taken. And from a young age, the first seven years is our really programming. Yes, it is. So we cannot take that that divine truth and turn it into a lie. That's what fears are. They're yeah. the lies of the ego that you're not yeah. safe, that there's not enough, there's lack, there's this, there's that. I mean, constantly we're being told, oh, there's lack of water in the world. Oh, there's lack of uh, whatever. I mean, uh, where I'm at, our grass is all burnt. There's no grass around us because right. we can't really water our grass. We can only do it twice a week, but then the sun burns everything. So yes. it's you just look around and... Instead of seeing beauty and nature and colors and vibrations, we see dead flowers and, you know, all of that affects people's emotions. Your environment oh, affects your emotion. Just like rain. Because then when it the, rains your mind stuff. is telling you there's lack. Exactly. When, the, when it was raining in LA, it was beautiful. My backyard, my front yard, like I used to get out and say, oh my God, thank you. Because nature just renews itself. But now the sun is out and it's burning everything. Everything is dry. And your environment, too. It's not just even physically what we're told and said. Yeah. it's Our environment has a lot to do with our happiness as well. Oh, and when you're surrounded by nature, but then what do our cities do? They keep cutting down trees and taking away nature and building buildings. And it's like we're literally living in concrete jungles. Yeah. And that affects us too emotionally because then we're more and more disconnected from our nature. Yeah. But nature itself, which is our nature. And so yeah. when you're disconnected, what happens? Fear, doubt, Fear. worry, all of those things. You lose perspective on, on yourself. You lose a, a exactly. perspective on what's important. And then you start neglecting yourself and the list goes on. Exactly. Exactly. Even before we started our meeting, how you said, there's so much coming your way. And I was going to just tell you, then take control of it. Balance it. Maybe do a little bit less. Don't, yeah. don't do so much that you lose a sense of you're not present anymore. Right. Exactly. So, and I think that's I mean, that's there's the always going to be things that come at us. Oh, I 100%. learned the hard way. Like I used to schedule clients from 9am to 9pm until there was a time where I completely lost my voice because in my sessions, I talk a lot. Yeah. I'm a different type of therapist. I communicate with my clients during hypnotherapy. I talk for half an hour nonstop. My voice completely went away. And my body, my higher self was like, well, if you don't have your voice, how do you do what you do? You just can't. Yeah. And so I had to really bring it back as much as I love what I do. I need to have a balance of work and play. Because if I'm constantly day and night in sessions, as much as I love what I do, again, my body goes, no, I'm not happy because I yeah. want to be in the sun. I want to be outside. I want to be in nature. I want to be by water. So it's all everything, everything in our life can lead to fear if we don't take the reins and we don't balance it. I don't want to say control because the more we try to control, the more out of control we become. So surrender and balance when we notice an area in our lives is not flowing do something about it yes. change it exactly because if we don't change it nobody else will <laughs> exactly and we're I only going to spiral down into a deeper hole and fear oh 100 percent, 100 percent. and i feel like our bodies always talk to us it's just that we don't listen like when you were saying Absolutely. that you talk so much and you lost your voice while well, your body's saying why don't you slow down you know you're 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 doing too much and i can't keep up with you 
you know, so it's like, exactly. we have to really listen to our body and our soul and, and our spirit. And I think, you know, it's always given us signals and it's always given us signs and it talks to us in our own way, just like dogs talk to us in different volumes when they try to high, low, high, low, you know, they're trying to communicate Well, our bodies and our mind and our inner self tries to communicate with us. And we have to listen because yes. at some point you exactly. have to really know yourself well enough to know what your body's telling you and what you're feeling. Exactly. And thinking. Yeah. Before my clients even come to our first sessions, I always send them how to prepare for the session. And I invite them to really evaluate their love life, their relationships, their friendships, their work life, their money and and careers and family and their relationship with themselves. And then they bring a list and they're like, I'm so embarrassed. There's so much I go. This is all normal because we need to address all areas of your life because yeah. it's a chain reaction. As one area is suffering, the other area starts to suffer with it. So 100%. it is always, always one of the, the easiest things that I would invite your listeners to do is to just to sit and be honest with themselves and evaluating their love life, their career their relationship with family, their relationships with friendships, and and really because that's their relationship with themselves, they're how they take care of their body. Yeah. Because it's not just so many of my clients say, but I eat well and I exercise. Okay, that's for the physical body. What about your emotional body, spiritual body? Yeah. What 100%. about those? You, you cannot, you can't just do one over the other. It's mind, body, soul work. You oh, need to 100%. tend to all three all the time. Yeah, because if we don't tend to one, especially the spiritual one, as I know best, if I don't meditate, if I don't do breath work, if I don't do my to like I don't work with my tools, mm -hmm. my spirit is very quick to be like, well, I'm running on low tank of fuel, you better recharge, right? But the moment that I do, it's like the vibration just it's so easy to raise our vibration so yeah. easy. Oh, I agree. And just we need to recognize that we need to give ourselves every single day, minimum 20 minutes to 30 minutes, self-love time. Oh, 100%. Just as we think this appointment is important and that important appointment is important, the job is important. Well, guess what? If you get sick, if you're emotionally and not doing well, that job is going to suffer. Yeah. And then your money is going to suffer and then your life is going to suffer. So might as well, as I always tell my clients, put yourself love first on that yes. list, because when you do, then everything else flows, right. but everybody else does it backwards. Oh, the yes. job is more important. I've, I've had so many of my clients, we need to reschedule because I have to do this job. Mm -hmm. Okay, put yourself love last. And then they come back and they go, Oh, my God, I shouldn't have done that. I needed to see you. I needed to recharge. And so I hear it all the time. And of course, I cannot tell my clients how to live their lives, but I can teach them. Yeah, that's where the coaching comes in. I keep telling them until it catches on because it does take us 21 to 30 days yeah. to make new neural pathways. So it's about creating those neural pathways that I do with my clients for them to change their old unwanted habits with the yeah. new ones and turn the fear to love. Exactly. As in my books, that's what I talk about. Like fear is an illusion. Love yes. is all there is. Exactly. Bottom line. <laughs> That's so we, true. We don't even need to choose love. We are love. Yes. We don't exactly. need to choose love. We are love. And once we catch on to that, as it took me years to really believe it, because so many of my clients in the beginning, they're like, I'm saying it, but I feel like I don't believe it yet. I go, well, repeat it enough times and you will become a believer. Yeah. Because our belief changes, our life changes. Our exactly. thoughts change, our life changes exactly and repetition is necessary because people think oh i'll do it one time uh, i'll do one session and it'll be done but repetition is necessary as in anything oh, 100%. when yes. we go to school how many years of the same math problems do we repeat oh goodness yes like over and over and over it's repetition a hundred percent i agree totally with you and you know, I, so tell me a little bit about your books before we go. I want to hear a little bit about the different books you have and where people can find them. Yeah. So my books are on Amazon and on my website. Um, and the first book that I wrote years ago, 
I know we have an audio, but I'm just gonna grab my book. No, actually, and show them we, to we you. do put our we do put all our um all our podcasts go on YouTube on on the oh yeah. you do yeah oh my so god the natural, all the day, the natural and healing tips on on YouTube <laughs> we have a very large following and we have our all all our podcasts go on there we have a whole section for our podcast so oh, everybody will see you today beautiful. Okay. <laughs> And I didn't even put makeup on and I didn't prepare myself. That's okay. Cause I didn't, audio. usually I do and I didn't do it today. So don't worry. <laughs> Nature took its course. Nature took its course We're all today. Natural. <laughs> so the first book I wrote was living through choice. And this was not only my journey, but the journey of my clients and why I basically just had my higher self guide the way in the title and what we, I needed to talk about it. Uh, living through choice was really not only my awakening and understanding that I have a choice because all my life, my mom said, whatever God wrote on your forehead is what the truth is. Mm. And that's it. And I felt I have no choice in my own life. And so the title of this book is really to recognize that, yes, we do have a choice in life and we can turn our fears into love. So that's basically the foundation of the book, but more so what I do talk about is empowerment and taking our power back and realizing that the traditional way is not the only way of healing because yes. so many of my clients like over the years have come to me from traditional therapy and five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they're just so tired of talking about the same thing over and over and over again and nothing changing in their life. Right. So at the end of the day, this becomes the catalyst for people to realize there is other ways of doing this. And yes. that number one way that we need to change is on our subconscious level, not just the conscious level of talking and talking and talking and talking, because the conscious level is literally following the guidance of the subconscious. Our subconscious is running the show. Yeah. So in order for us to really change is we need to change our life. And so 100%. that's the first book of transforming fears into love, which is literally what we were talking about today. Yes. And then my second book that is new, it is Wisdom Unbounded, A Guide to Alignment, Freedom and Peace. Literally, that's that was my mission with this book for us to re recognize we have a choice in changing our life and the wisdom is all within us. So it's basically they go together. It's kind of like, this is us recognizing we have a choice. We have other tools that we can take our power back. And this realizing that the power has always been within us. The mm -hmm. wisdom has always been within us. It is not outside of ourselves. Confidence is not outside of ourselves. Our power is not outside of ourselves. We are our greatest foundation of essence of divine consciousness. Whether people believe it or not, we are consciousness that is divine and it has nothing to do with any religion. Yeah, I was born and raised Christian. But to me, it's not about religion. It's about the recognition of we are powerful beings. We are in the likeness of divine essence of unconditional love, unconditional life. We do have to ourselves both the yin and yang, which is dark and light, male and female. And it is us really, instead of fighting one over the other or ignoring one over the other, it's about re recognizing that we are all of it. Yes. And in accepting our own darkness, we accept our light. Yes. And it's not, instead of fearing our own thoughts, we conquer it with love and we tame it with love. We nurture it with love. And so those fears really become empowerment. Yes. And they don't limit us anymore. So No, not at all. Not at all. Now, what's your website address that people go on and they can find all your stuff on your website? It's www.journeys, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y-S, to heal, T-O-H-E-A-L.com. So journeys to heal.com. That's excellent. I, I saw your website. I was very impressed with it. You have a beautiful website. And a lot of Thank information. You. So I, I encourage people to go and, and, and look at your website because you have a lot of great information there. And if people want to contact you, do they just go directly to your website? Yes, directly to my website. They can also find me on Yelp. I have wonderful 
uh, clients that have over the years written many beautiful reviews and they can just find out more, more about how he, the healing happens because in from my clients experiences it's so much easier for people to understand what happens what changes how their transformation so i have close to 200 five star reviews on yelp so they can find me in yelp as well oh that's and awesome. all that information is also on my website so. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, it's been a pleasure having you today, Christine, and I invite you to come back, you know, anytime you want to come back, please, you know, feel free. You know, I'd love to tap into some other topics that, you know, we were talking about previously, because there's so many different areas that you can give such great advice to. And I really enjoyed having you. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. All right. You have a great day. Thank you. You as well.